Hey everybody, Jennifer from the Channel Frederator Network here with Sam Ellis. Um, we have, this is part two of a live stream of how he creates web comics through like Illustrator and Photoshop and all those specific things. If you want to see part one, the um, link is in the description below. Well, hold on one second because I can hear myself and it's really distracting. Um, so, also, guys, if you have any um, any questions at all, feel free to join us in the group chat. Ask us any questions you'd like to ask. You can also comment later or send me an email at jenniferfrederator.com. Um, and we would be really happy to get started. So, Sam, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit and take it away? Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Sam Ellis. Uh, most people know me from my work on Archer. Um, I'm a cartoonist. Uh, I, I don't know. I've got some chickens in a family, and uh, I went to school. Uh, I'm opening a design school because I'm really against for-profit education, but I, I am for education. Uh, I just don't think you should mortgage your life for it. Um, and I like to do stuff like this and, and just talk to people online so that they can try to glean knowledge, uh, assimilate it, bring it into their, their lives without ruining their lives, chasing dreams. For a lot I agree with that wholeheartedly. Don't spend money, kids. It's online. There's so much stuff on YouTube, and you got this great network to check out. So, so let me show you some stuff that I do for comics. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do screen share here for you guys, so you guys can uh, follow along. And um, I'm gonna do a really quick recap over uh, just the basics of getting started. So. When I start uh, doing a comic or what have you, I start by doing sketches. Um, and, and I usually work pretty fast. In fact, I'll, I'll open up my emails here and just kind of um, show you something that happened just before. So at 342, I got, a, I got an email from Wizard World, and they do uh, conventions and stuff. They wanted to know if I would, uh, let's see, I was going, they wanted to see if I'm interested in doing a simple color character piece for Con TV. So they let uh, different people decide the name of the uh, heroes for their state. And Virginia was the colonizer. I'm here in Virginia, mother of presidents. Um, so I did a really quick sketch within, I don't know, a couple minutes and was like, uh, here's an idea. Uh, and I went with something old school, patriotic, highwayman, um, you know, red, white, and blue. Uh, and they like it. And I'm, I'm waiting to hear back from them. But I like to work fast. Uh, with the ideas, which is why I usually do character design stuff, because I've got, I don't know, I'm ADD, so it's just drawing all sorts of stuff. So uh, on the last thing I was talking about, sitting in church and not paying attention, I should have been, but I was um, just drawing funny little pictures uh, in my sketchbook um, of uh, the Adventure Time guys, and I thought it would be funny if um, I could get, uh, really, Ice King to kiss Lemon Grab, so... I, uh, I decided to go ahead and, and start that, and I called my sister up and said, hey, Sarah, I'm not a good uh, wordsmith, but um, uh, I did this first page, uh, which is Lemon Grab going through kind of an existential crisis where um, he wants a new face. So uh, her and I got together, and uh, in the last video, you guys should check it out, click in the comments, um, I have uh, some of the sketches that I did. Um, going through uh, those pages and, and kind of roughing them out. Uh, and, and, you know, the thing about comics is that a lot of people will tell you that there's a right way and a wrong way to do comics. The biggest secret to doing any kind of uh, work, whether it's animation or comics or uh, football or karate or skating or off-ice hockey or whatever, is just doing it. Um, just like... Um, just like uh, uh, Nike says, to just do it. That's the that's the biggest thing. This is not my logo, guys. Uh, just do it. Um, that is the biggest key to uh, to going forward. So when I have ideas, um, uh, I I'll usually just start roughing them out. And um, I had a script. Let me see if I have. No, I'm, I'll just tell you what it is. 
it, the script doesn't matter as much because I'm writing these things for myself. I wanted to do a little uh, story, and I don't know if I'm going to pitch this one or not, but I like to, you know, you guys do fan fiction. I do fan fiction too, really. So I'll, I'll sit there and I'll start to draw stuff out. I said, you know, I, I really like, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, is it Starchy, the little donut hole from um, uh, Adventure Time? So I, uh, I was like, it would be cool if I could get him to become a giant and uh, take over the, uh, the candy kingdom. So I started doing these sketches. I, I think of the area. I, I try to work uh, economically. So you can see I've got these different layers up here. I, I paced out how I wanted the, um, the page to be. And it, this is not to scale. This is just drawing quick lines and then making what is very, very readable by me. So uh, I'll, I'll just kind of draw over this and define for you guys and, and give you guys a few little um, tips while I'm doing this. So this right here is some tombstones and so, so you're just drawing with your tablet right yeah just right on the screen as we go um if you can get one uh they make life easier if you can't you know what paper works just as well there's nothing wrong with having an extra step um it just you know it's it is what it is um but I, for years, worked on, uh, yeah, no, I'm using a mouse. No, I'm kidding. Mm -hmm. Isn't that impressive? Uh, but for years, you know, it was just paper. And I'm actually getting back into uh, doing a lot of paper stuff as of lately because um, I was working almost exclusively digitally. And, and I find uh, working with tangible medium just really uh, makes me feel like a better artist because when the power goes off, it still exists. So um, Starchy's a little grave digger, so I set this comic um, here in, in a little cemetery. Um, and what I'll do is I'll draw out these, um, these backgrounds, and then I will copy and paste that mess because there is no reason to have to do it again and again and again. So once I get this out, and, and the basic setup here that I'm doing, you notice there's a tree on the left, there's a tree on the right and the reason why I like to set these up is uh, back in the old days uh, we had things called uh, plays and I believe they still have those at things such as like elementary schools and um, uh, there's this place called Broadway I hear I've heard about it I've never been there but I'd like to be a part of it um, so this setup here is very reminiscent of what you'll see even in some movie theaters when you look up at the screen they have a curtain at the top and they have curtains on the side and these curtains will open and close and what it does is it creates a place for you to look on a stage and the little characters they hang out and they perform their little stage play and that is called a proscenium arch I may have mispronounced that but a proscenium arch and uh, what it does is it frames your characters uh, and helps direct where uh, the action is going to take place. So as I um, draw where Starchy's going to be, he's going to have his little hat. And... Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Starchy's old and digging the grave because that's the you best know, thing. Um, yes. I have a question. Yeah. When uh, you draw, uh -huh. do you, like, because sometimes, you know, I draw and stuff too. I make faces or noises yes. of the characters that I'm drawing and it like if I'm making a really angry character I'll have a really angry look on my face and yes. everybody makes me like what are you so mad about I'm like nothing I'm just drawing an angry character life and angst um yeah no I uh so when I went to school even though I'm anti for-profit things I had some good professors and one of them his name was Paul Hudson and he designed the space suit that NASA uses and Paul um, he, uh, he said it's, it's all about the sound FX, Paul Hudson, 
And um, if you're not making sound effects or faces, you're not doing it right. Uh, mm -hmm. When I taught animation for years, um, I would always have, and, and you guys at home, uh, if you can do this, this is really fun, uh, stand out of your chair. Uh, go ahead and stand up. I'll, I'll do it too. So uh, I'm going to stand up. I'll stand. Stand up. And then you can sit back down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Huh? <laughs> But in the process of standing up, you analyze what you did. And I don't know if you noticed, but you can go back and watch the video of yourself forward and down before you go up. So there's these movements that we call in animation, but also use it in comics, is called antics. And what an antic is, is it's an anticipatory action. Anticipatory. Action <laughs> and, what, uh, and what that is is that it's a small action that precedes a larger action So if you have a character that is going to jump they're going to go down before they go up uh, if you have a character that's going to um, Shoot a bow and arrow. They're going to pull it back and uh, a few years back Don Bluth had a um, uh, an online learning um, like it was called Don Cyber Garage, and there were, oh man, eight of us uh, that would go and meet with Don Bluth every Wednesday, and uh, it was always, I thought, the most sad thing, because I love Don, and I love his animation. He could animate the heck out of anything. Um, not the best storyteller, uh, but his animation was just fantastic, and um you know, he taught us that the entertainment value lies inherently in the antic, that it's not the th not throwing the baseball, but it's in the wind-up uh, that leads to throwing the baseball. Um, because you can show, and he showed us uh, a clip of Donald Duck. Uh, he's throwing snowballs at Huey, Dewey, and Louie uh, at, like, another snow bank, and he does this crazy wind-up. And he like hops on his foot and then throws the ball, and that's where the entertainment lies. So when you're doing comics, uh, you want to think about uh, think about think about uh, three steps, and that would be um, the antic, the action. And then, I don't know, the aftermath. Nice. I'm thinking of another, uh, I'm just like, all right, let's make triple A. Another A, triple A, got it. So the aftermath. So and that would be like the settling or the follow through uh, or whatever else. So in storyboarding, this is super important because you're basically animating everything for the animators. Uh, <laughs> I'm not diminishing what animators do. But you're setting... <laughs> You're setting everything up for them so they don't get lost because what they have to do is really laborious and at the end of the day they want to kill themselves. So you're trying to alleviate that uh, by, by taking some of that work out for them. But I like to do that in my comics because um, uh, sometimes my mom will read what I did and she's real easy to like lose and she'll be like, did you draw this? And I'm like, yes, yes, mother. I, I just, and uh, it's just, you know, uh, you don't want to lose people. So um, so I will go through and make like a real quick thumbnail uh, of these panels, and then I'll take it to the next step uh, once I have all the characters uh, li laying in. And I can talk about why I make certain decisions. Um, and like this panel, he's like, phew. He goes back to dig, and he's like, well, what do we have here now? Something just clanked on my shovel because I'm, I don't know, I'm thinking like old Hannah Barbera cartoons. We have to explain everything that they see on the screen. Uh, and then he drops down into the grave, and we've got a little chest here, and then he opens up the uh, the, the thing, and it's what you call a trunk shot. And he's like, oh, my. And he's going to grab a little tiara. It's going to be the tiara of terror, and he puts it on. It turns him into like this whole type character and I don't know the gumball machines will fight them but once I'm done with that I will take these layers uh, I will merge them 
and just I'll select everything and um, so to select I'll hit V you can remember V uh, I'll, I'll draw it up here really quick so when you're doing hotkeys in um, in Illustrator and you know what maybe I'll make a video for my YouTube channel to help people get through these so the arrow mm -hmm. looks like this right so that that's the thing that lets you select um, and when you select, you can like click and drag across and it'll grab everything. So if you look at this shape, um, that equals V. So V equals arrow. What you're doing is just eliminating this garbage. Um, and oh, really, is it not grabbing? <laughs> I did it all in one. Okay. There you go. You're eliminating this and you have a V. So that's, that's your arrow. Um, a is your direct select if you want to mess with other things. B for brush, right? Uh, um, but on all of my like speed sketches, um, I, I talk about this stuff and I and I try to. I'm like N for pencil, N. You hit N for pencil. So uh, I don't know why that makes sense. Like in if I'm teaching Flash and I go, oh, Y is for pencil, and that looks like the pencil head coming down from uh, the pencil, but in in uh, Illustrator, it's N for, oh, I'm like, fro? What am I doing? All right, <laughs> for pencil. So you, you shrink these ones and go, all right, that's what they were thinking. I don't think that's what they were thinking, but that's how I deal with life, is coming up with stupid little pneumatic devices. So. When I'm done with that, I'll usually typically just um, select those guys, go up to my opacity, and I will drop that down so that I can draw over the top uh, and make a nice drawing. Like, um, you know, I started one over here where I was just using some of the real basic tools uh, like L for Ovel or Circl. Right, that's my mnemonic device for that. So you hit L and then you get your circle L, circle L, mm -hmm. uh, or your oval uh, tool. So I'll start with that and then I'll go ahead and I drop in his little eyes and then I use P for the pen. I love to use the pen tool. A lot of people don't like it, but um, working with Bezier curves is just really fun. Um, and then I will, I have these palettes all over here open. Um, the strokes so I can change those and add in caps and make round uh, ends on them. Also changing the weight of uh, or the thickness of the stroke. Um, for me, Illustrator is just a real fast beast. And yesterday, I guess, Creative Cloud just released the new uh, version. There's supposed to be some cool new stuff under the hood, and I can't wait to find out. But I'm still on six. Uh, I used Illustrator eight for years, which is like, you know, before the C entered the equation. Um, but yeah, it's just going through the process and cleaning it up, usually over that. So if I turn him off and I grab this little guy, I'll bring him over there and I can show you guys. Oh, I was pretty close to his size there. Um, like for his arms, since they're the little Adventure Time arms and there's not much to them. Um, you can put them into place and then you can increase the stroke and then some of the things that I like to do is um, I created some hotkeys so one of my special hotkeys is command shift zero and that turns the stroke to fill and then I hit shift X and what it does is it inverses the, um, the width but that's like way too, uh, too thick so I'm going to undo a few things get it a little thinner and then do it again, and then invert it, and then go, okay, that's pretty good. And then I'll just come up here. Well, first I'll uh, copy, whoa, that was the link for this. Copy, uh, control, com okay, so if you're on PC, it's control, but I'm on a Mac. So command B for paste behind. You don't see anything, but if I hit uh, I for eyedropper and hit that button, then what it does is it drops the white in there, and then I'll hit A for direct select, Hit the point and just hit delete. Oh man, you know what I forgot to do? Select the black line and not the uh, the other one. So I'll hit that and then put my end cap. So really quickly, I can get really nice uniform lines because the one problem that I run into 
um, in in doing comics and stuff is that I'm not a machine, <laughs> it, but I'm like, since I'm OCD and ADD, I go, that needs to be perfect. And if I'm drawing uh, the line and, um, you know, I mean, usually I can get it pretty close, but this right here, I can't, I can't deal with that. Like this will ruin my day. Like I'll look at that and I will fixate on it like a bad Facebook comment, and I'll be like, "What do you mean? Don't they know? Oh man, I thought they they were this and they believed in that. Oh, I looked at their profile. You know, oh man. So that will ruin my day. So I just use the pen tool, and uh, I'm less crazy that way. Um, any questions yet? Um, yeah, there actually was one, but you were going so well that I didn't oh, want to interrupt feel you. Feel free to stop. But Colin, no, it's okay. Colin yeah. asked when you were talking about like the triple A's, like yeah. the uh, antic action and aftermath. Yes. Um, how do you get references for things that like you personally can't physically do, like backflip off a building? Ah, I can do that. <laughs> I, I just go to the hospital afterwards. Um, so there's a couple different things that you can do. One is um, uh, there's this awesome thing uh, that I have, and it, he might. I don't know if he has access to it, but it's called um, television. And uh, television mm -hmm. in, by Philo, Philo Farnsworth back in the uh, uh, early days uh, is this cool advent, and they put like people on it doing backflips. Um, the other thing is uh, is you know we're on on his YouTube. Um, What's that? I know, I know. Colin's gonna hate me. I know Colin. I love <laughs> Colin. Um, so I'll do those. There's other references that I have. Sometimes I will uh, look up, you know, parkour uh, videos. I can't spell it. I'll just make something up. Parkour. Um, Actually, yeah, that's right. Oh, yay! <laughs> I get a gold star. It's French, I think. <laughs> I don't have to burn myself with the cigarette. No. <laughs> All right. So I don't have any. All right. So uh, some of the other things is like. This sounds really dumb, but uh, video games um, in an old one back in the day uh, was the original. If you had the, uh, uh, what was it? Um, the Dreamcast. Uh, on the Dreamcast, they had a game called Soul Calibur. And uh, what was nice about Soul Calibur, the first one on the Dreamcast, is if you hit pause, is that uh, you could take your characters and you could rotate them around in a 3D environment. You could go under them, behind them, left, right, and it was inside a 3D world. So a lot of us guys, before there were really cool, um, there were really cool uh, sites like um, SketchUp, Google SketchUp. I don't know if any of you guys use Google SketchUp. It's like a free 3D program that uh, Google <laughs> has their hand in. And then they have something called the 3D Warehouse. Let me see if I can show you 3D Warehouse really quick. Um, 3D Where? Do you think at the end of this presentation you can send me a link to all these resources oh, and then absolutely. I can post them in the community? Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, Thank you. So in the, the 3D Warehouse, it's loading. Uh, maybe you want to find the A-Team van. Uh, there it is. So maybe you want the A-Team van and um, you want to check out the uh, the model. Well, I'll go ahead and hit this, and what we'll do is we'll get a live version of it. And you can turn it around from, like, any angle and, like, screen cap it. Um, and, you know, you're working on your comic and you need that cool upshot, and you've got, like, guys, here, watch. We'll <laughs> grab this. All right, and then... What we'll do, all right, Starchy's going to get action-y here. Right, so we're going to put this in. I'm going to turn those layers off, and we're going to go file, place, and uh, let's see, where's, uh, where's my desktop? All right, screenshot there. We'll put this in, and we'll, uh, we'll drop the opacity down to like 20, and 
we'll bring that up. All right, so now I'll lock that layer and just make a new one and bring this up. And what's really fun is that then you can just kind of take your time and uh, trace it out. Trace over it. Yeah. A lot of people think, oh, no, that's cheating. Um, but I don't care. Because uh, <laughs> you're doing a comic, when you're doing a, um, uh, an animation, you know, I don't think a lot of people are going to argue and say uh, Ralph Batchkey's uh, uh, fraud. I love Ralph. Um, you know, his Mighty Mouse and his uh, old Fire and Ice stuff. There's a lot of rotoscope stuff in there. Heck, there's a lot of old Disney stuff. If you go on YouTube and type in Disney Live Reference, and you know, you can you can do this. You draw beyond the reference. So we'll go ahead and we'll do like a real quick. Uh, drawing over this, but but the thing that's most important is once you get this, then then you make your new layer, and you draw starchy going. Oh my! Yeah. He's gonna have his mustache or whatever, and and his hands coming out like oh no, <laughs> hats off in the distance as he's coming up. Um, yeah. Anyways. I don't know. So there's lots of really good resources out there for yeah. everyone. And we're going to get a list from Sam, who is a professional at doing all these references. Speaking of references, we have another question from um, Ran. Is it good to get ideas fr from YouTube for an animation or any or anything else to get, like, ideas, I guess? Um, so I'm going to go... Uh, Disney movies are all <laughs> someone else's story. And we'll start. There it is, uh, in black and white. <laughs> Snow White, Lion King, um, <laughs> The White Lion. Um, there's all of those movies are. Um, are someone else's stories, you know. Um, Kirby, you guys had Kirby Ferguson on not too long ago, mm -hmm. uh, and if you guys haven't checked that out, you should. But if if you're not familiar with Kirby, um, you should. Uh, I'm going to switch over because I'm not drawing right now. No one wants to see just a dead. Uh, I don't know what happened. Okay, um, but he did a, a series of videos called "Everything's a Remix," and it's something that I think um, anyone that is going into a creative field should uh, take the time to watch um, because the way that we learn and we assimilate things, um, there are very few original type uh, of ideas, whether it's um, on a biological, chemical uh, DNA thing where we, um, he has three different ways that we, we either copy uh, we transmute, not transmute, uh, anyone in the comments can correct me, um, but we like mutate mm -hmm. um, or we, uh, we combine. So we either copy, combine, or mutate. And um, I mean, look at language, LOL. <laughs> no one's writing guffaw. You know, they're all writing LOL. And I hear people going, lol you know, under their breath, and I'm like, that's actually not LOL at all. When you're saying lol under your breath, that's like, right. it's, you're, ha, ha. but, um, you know, if you find a story, adapt it, change it. You know, people that are like, and I don't know what, like, Eric would think about this as people are pitching their ideas, but if they, if they're, if they come up with their own characters and they don't know what mm -hmm. to do with them, a good starting point is to just take some of those like old Grimm's fairy tales or Aesop's fables and like remix it and go, I'm going to put my characters into this scenario and see how it plays out. And, you know, if nothing else, it's a really great practice to, to develop those characters to who they want to be because um, just like we live our lives every day, you know, the characters that I, I draw, um, like from my own stories, the Robot Cowboy Samurai guys, they change little by little every day, and it's not just um, uh, all at once. It's like, you know, they make bad choices as I make bad choices for them. Um, because action delineates character. Um, so when you're telling someone that your story's cool, 
your comic's cool. You have to show them. You have to show, not tell. So if your comic's mm -hmm. funny, it better make people laugh, or I got news for you, it's not funny. Um, it could be like, smells funny, funny, which, you know, is the kind that doesn't make you laugh, but, uh, it, you know, I don't know. Uh, what's next? Oh, I wanted to show lettering. Uh, There's uh, another question if you want to answer that one. Yeah, um, which brush size do you prefer to use when using Illustrator for your comics? What is the size uh, of the brush that is best to use for the background and what's best to use the characters in the foreground? Yeah, so if you uh, ever read an Archie comic before, uh, they have thick, medium, and thin. Everything in the foreground is thick, all the interior lines are medium. Everything in the middle ground is medium. All the interiors of that are thin, and everything in the far background is thin. That's it, three lines. Uh, it seems to work okay for Archie. Um, they've made a couple books. Um, now, I don't know. <laughs> just a few. Yeah, this is one or two. Um, I don't always do that. Let me show you a couple more resources, and I can give you guys these resources in the comments as well. Um, let me click over there and hit screen share. Uh, my friend Sherm Cohen. Uh, who he has a really great uh, set of videos. Um, he's got uh, he, he does a site called Storyboard Secrets, um, where you can uh, get his cool DVD set and learn a lot about storyboarding. This right here, I don't know how much it is. Let me look. Um, but let me tell you, four hundred ninety-five dollars. Okay, you can save yourself one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. By not going to and buying his 10 DVD box set of uh, storyboard secrets, if you want to learn about storyboarding, um, and Sherm's really great, approachable. He's the director of SpongeBob. Um, he got his start in Ren and Stimpy, uh, and he's like a really great asset to the comic and cartoon community because he shares a lot of stuff. And one of his sites is Cartoon Snap, and. Um, uh, there we go. And it's on a blog spot. And see this blog spot? What's great about blog spot for uh, all you guys watching at home is you can make them for free uh, on Blogger, and you can put your comics on there. And uh, really quick, so like my man of uh, Missly uh, blog spot, when you, and if you pay your $10 a year, they'll drop the dot blog spot if you want it on Google. But um, So like when I was – doing comics so like here were some of my little bravest word fan things that i was doing um you know you can just put them in there and then uh in carousel mode you just press right on your keyboard and it goes to the next page um and then you're done reading you can go to the next page so you know it's it's an easy way to start for free tumblr's another good one tumblr has not a lot of great comic themes but they have a couple uh, that are pretty good, and um, you guys should check them out. So, uh, really quick, on his site, he has uh, here he's talking about Storyboard Pro. So, if you want some free tips on using that program, uh, he's got a bunch and he does all the whatever. So, anyway, sorry, Adobe Illustrator. He does things a little bit different than I do, but on his Adobe Illustrator thing, he created some brushes um, on the freehand calligraphic brush tool. Uh, you click on that, and uh, you can download some brushes that he made if you don't want to um, make them yourself. It's easy just to make them, um, and I can show you guys how to do that really quick. Um, Why don't we um, do another how-to live stream of how to make brushes? Oh, yeah, we could do that. Uh, I mean, heck, there's, yeah, you can, whatever you would like me to do, it's easy uh, for yeah. illustrating. Um, let's see, but yeah, you just download that and, um, yeah, uh, he's got five of them made for you. So on this comic, um, let me double click on it. It'll open up. It's, it's reading. Uh-huh. All right. I'm closing this one. <laughs> All right, so on this this one, because this has all the pages uh, included on it, um, I'm going to zoom in. 
and I make one more thing. I'm going to make a white panel and show you guys more or less how something like this would would go. So I'm going to select this, selects everything. I'm just going to drop that down to 60, so it is similar to animation paper. So uh, I've got these Sherm brushes right here that I downloaded uh, in advance. Mm -hmm. In anticipation, anticipation, anticipation. Right. It's, it's like participation, but scarier. Right, and uh, so this one is too thick. It's on ultra fine. I'll just come up here and put that to 0.5. Make sure the fill is off, and I'll just go through and go through. What's nice about the um, the Illustrator brushes versus the uh, Photoshop brushes is that you can, um, when you double click on your brush, I moved my palette over here just so not take up as much space because all of this is taking up a ton of stuff. Um, so if you double click on uh, the brush tool, it opens up this menu and you can change how much it'll like correct for you. Um, so I like it to correct my line so that I don't, it, so it doesn't look so Schultzian, um, which would be to be like Charles Schultz. I mean, that's cool, but not for the Adventure Time guys. If I'm doing a, a something for Peanuts, then, you know, I'm going to uh, to want to do that. So after I'm done doing this, um, now it looks a little thicker on the outside. That's because when I'm done with the character, I'll select everything and put, like, a, a dark stroke behind it. Um, but I, I, you know, I'll go through and, and clean things up. Or if you hit N and hold Alt, your pencil gets this little twisty look on it. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. But it gets a little spiral. It gets a little extra. Yeah. But you go through and it'll, like, smooth out your lines. And uh, you can get rid of some of those extra dots. So then you can kind of move things into place a little easier if you want to um, – to spiff it up. So, uh, so as far as the brush goes, who was that? Was that Ran who asked? No, Alessandro. Oh, Alessandro. Hey, Alessandro, how you doing? Good. All right. Um, so, yeah, like the brushes, um, the theory that I have behind it is I work with um, something that's just a little more thin on the inside and a little thicker on the outside. But, again, that's just an aesthetic that I like. Um, you don't have to use that aesthetic at all. When I'm doing things in Manga Studio Pro, um, and, and I, I'm not going to, like, open up that program, but I have a... Um, Would you recommend that? Because I, I remember I bought it a long time, like, when it first started, and I opened it, and I it was slow, and I didn't like it. Like, has it upgraded since then? Like, would you so recommend that at all? The version before the one now. So I've got, on this one, I have... EX4 in Manga Studio, which is 5. EX4 has a lot of the same features as 5. 5 is totally a different program. Way easier to use, but um, and they have videos that are like easy to follow that answer specific questions that you want to see, which is what I hated about this one. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I absolutely hated it when I first got it. But then I started doing... Um, RCS Tumblr, because I do that on Tumblr. Uh, it's, come on, open. Open fast. Let me open that one. I should be plugged in. Okay, okay let's see. Uh, let's see, Speed Sketch, Sam, Post, Pokemon Animation, Navigation, Comic. Um, so when, when I do these, um, uh, let's see, so there's that one, and then this one is funny because you can, like, well, I don't know if that's if that's the one. I will spend way too much time. Oh, good, so it's rest. I don't know. I mean, you can just keep zooming in on these scenes. I made, like, really giant versions. I'm spending way too much time on a cactus that I didn't need. Because <laughs> it's the problem with programs like those vectors that give you nice crisps lines is that you can just keep zooming in and zooming in and zooming in. And I'm like, I'm going to put all these lines on the dirt. And uh, there's no reason for it. But, you know, I, 
it looks really good and it, yeah. you can tell all the time and effort and detail you've taken into it. It just yeah. takes up some of your time. Yeah, it does. So uh, I, I like it, um, but I've done that comic in so many different styles because I've been unhappy with it. You know, maybe it's – okay, so uh, to tell on myself, uh, for you comic guys that are out there, again, the secret is just – doing it because when I first did it, um, it was coming out like hey, old scans, old scans. Um, I was doing stuff on paper and like cutting and pasting stuff in and you know, that's one way that you can go about doing it. Um, I did it in an adventure time kind of style. You know, I was like, um, doing all sorts of like how do I want to do the book and ultimately uh, this the solution that I came up with is uh, draw however you're most happy don't worry about pleasing anyone else at first just till you can find a little bit of happiness and then go all right now I need to make my fans happy as well but to get started initially, you have to do something that you love or you're going to hate it the whole time. Like, uh, I don't know, like my parents hate me. No, I'm just kidding, Mom, Dad. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, you want to make sure that uh, that whatever you're doing that you, that you love. Um, and, then, and then you can do uh, things for everyone else. Um, because if you want to make money, you have to do things for other people, not yourself. Because um, if you... If you don't, you're going to have this attitude the whole time is, why won't people buy my stuff? Um, and that's, you know, that's just the reality of it. And then at night you'll be like this, sad and alone, playing a sandwich no. from home. Yep. So, uh, we're, okay. Let me show you some quick things for lettering. Um, because lettering, I think, is an important part of the whole um, comic process and what I'm going to do. So, oh yeah. So Sam, I'm I'm going to suggest that we do a part three because it's been oh, an hour. Right. We have five minutes. And you know what? Because you have you are such a wealth of information and knowledge, and just have so much to say. I kind of want to make this stream monthly or bi-monthly yeah. so you can come on show people some tips and we could just make this a whole series sounds of how to make web comics sounds great uh because i've got a all right what i'm doing so i can just I, yeah it's amazing so maybe you can like get some work done and teach people all at the same time and if if uh if we do it monthly and i mean it's up to you guys if you wanted to be able to chime in uh as long as they're like respectful and just one person talks at a time um then that's cool if if we want to uh q and a it that's cool too because then i can keep <laughs> keep going <laughs> right well i like i like because you're just like a flow a verbal anyway uh, verbal stream which is great i love it I'm um so we have <laughs> We have about five more minutes if you want to end this up. And I think next time we're going to do lettering and what else? Like we haven't even really touched coloring and positioning. Yeah, um, you know, maybe uh, maybe what if we invited uh, people to come in with some ideas and I start working on my um, Junior Robo and Kid Kaiju? Uh, story um, and then we can take some of their suggestions and implement them uh, through okay. thumbnail and the next time we'll take the thumbnails that are generated and we can just do one that's just inking and then we can do one that's just coloring mm -hmm. and do one that has like well maybe we do one that's just like flatting which is putting in the general colors and I can talk about color theory and adding warm, cool, etc. you know, to, to tone things Perfect. Because uh, we touched on the first one, like environments and changing the time of day, but yeah. I think it would be best because everything is so detail oriented and so in-depth, which I love and I don't want to take away, that we should really devote a very specific live stream to a very specific one. Yeah, okay. Sounds great. And then that way if people want to, like, cherry-pick information, and I'm going to be putting some um, 
tips and tricks on my uh, YouTube site as well as reviews for materials because mm -hmm. this past week uh, buying all the materials for my kids comic camp uh, that I teach at a local comic shop um, there were no reviews on red pencil lead and I was like but there's like five different types so I got Mitsubishi mm -hmm. lead and this lead and uh, turquoise lead even though it's red and uh, Prismacolor because I like using red and blue and I, I mean you know I just go through a bunch of different stuff so I I'm gonna do some short reviews so if you guys want to find out what I think about the materials check out uh, RCS and Robot Cowboy Samurai on YouTube and uh, yeah ask me questions I'm happy to answer awesome. them. Awesome. So information will be in the description after it goes live on YouTube later. Um, and check out Robot Cowboy Samurai, his YouTube channel, Sam Ellis. He's amazing. He does comics for, like, everyone and everyone. He's uh, just yeah. so talented. Um, oh, and we're really happy to have him network. Yes. I going to say next week, come see me and Stephen Ray uh, Brown or Steve Ray Bro. Stev. Yeah. Uh, at Stev Ray Bro. Uh, Got it. Uh, good friend Brooke Allen, who is just north of here, uh, is going to be there as well. So if you're in Indianapolis, come on by, say hi. And uh, uh, if you're part of the network, I'll, I'll draw you a cat bug or something. I won't even try. <laughs> a, free, a free drawing from these guys. Sure. Go, go see them in Indianapolis. Uh, definitely post in the community. Um, Sam is available. Stev Ray Bro is like, always on the community. Um, and ask them any questions you feel free. So, yeah, thank you guys, and we'll see you again next month, probably. Bye. Bye. <laughs>